Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Today on the menu is going to be a lesson with Sylveig. Um, she is a chess punk, an adult improver. Um, she posts a lot of very cool content on Twitter, so make sure that you follow her over there. Um, she's also a YouTuber, so I'm going to put all these social um, media links down below in the description and now let's go on to the lesson she told me that she wanted to um cover a particular topic which was pins so this is going to be a calculation exercise sprinkled with lots of pins let's check it out Mine going. and i'm just starting i started a new one because if i record in many smaller bits rather than in one big then i actually can't handle the size of the recording otherwise it's a nightmare <laughs> whoa so wait, I have something for you that is going to make you I don't know tears of joy. It's it's so beautiful. It's a pin I'm, fest. I'm very curious now. Ah, oh, good. Now I need to deliver that. But uh, but uh, I don't know if it's a pin fest if it will be tears of joy or tears of mystery since I'm not good at pins. <laughs> no, no, no. You will love the outcome no matter what. Okay, so I found no, I didn't manage to Oh, actually I Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. Now I need to, I need to cut back the board, but that's okay. Um, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's not go there. Uh, I'm gonna flip it around for you. Mm -hmm. Let me see if OBS is doing what. Oh yeah, it already has done it. I'm going to quickly recut the board. In the meantime, you can start thinking. It is black to move. And. Mm -hmm. The real beauty about this business is, is that you already have a pin on the board. Yeah, on the rook. But what are I gonna... ordered the oh, on the on the king. I mean, on the rook. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the rook is pinned to the king. Mm. However, there is a beautiful phenomenon here that you are going to maybe learn. Maybe you have already seen. I don't know. I'm going to give away the name of it, and I figure. Queen. It... Queen D4. Ah, come on, don't ruin my party. <laughs> genius, <laughs> genius. Okay, you know what? There we go. I, I, I will now test you on creativity. What name would you give to this situation? Um, Do you know what it's called? No, I want to figure something out, something fun. So uh, it, it's been I, this I, way and it's been that way. That's my hint. What is it called? Uh, I don't know. What would uh, you call it? What name would you give to this pin when a pin is when a piece is pinned both this way and this way? I would say sandwich, but I'm <laughs> loving it. I'm seriously scared it's going to be loving it. <laughs> loving it. Um, not quite. No. Uh, unfortunately, the chess dudes at the time when they figured the name out were not as creative as you are. They called it a cross pin. Yeah, because. Cross was my first thought, but I thought it's not fun. Ah, you smashed <laughs> it. Uh, it's a very common theme in compo studies, and it occurs very rarely in real games. But boy, is it a beautiful motif. Now, I've never seen this before. Oh, yeah. I thought, that, I, I thought that you would like it because of that. Uh, not particularly mm -hmm. hard, but uh, wow, wow, Zerus, that was really, really nice. Now, I'm going to show you an all-time classic. We are going to call upon our good friend uh, Kasparov. Kasparov himself. The, I studied uh, studied a game with him with uh, my other coach yesterday. Which actually. one? Uh, against uh, oof, it was a Kings Indian game from 1992 in the Olympiad. Yeah, Piquet. Uh, against. Uh, it's either coach or Piquet. It was against the uh, camps. Kamsky. Oh, the Kamsky uh, one. Is that the one where Kamsky castled Queenside and then got absolutely slaughtered in an opposite yeah, colored yeah, bishop was, scenario? He, yeah, he played the same ish and he just got yeah. absolutely destroyed. It's yeah. uh, very brutal. Do you know why I know that so well? It's because uh, it's in my... It? No, it's because it's in my chessable course and in my book with uh, Judith Polgar that we wrote together. Oh, that's amazing. I need yeah. to tell him this. Yeah, so that's because we have an entire chapter dedicated to opposite colored uh, bishop middle games. And that mm -hmm. is a beautiful example where Kaspar of Saxe pawn and then just goes to town on that king. Holy moly. 
yeah it was uh, it was really interesting to watch and i struggled to uh, i struggled to find a lot of uh, <laughs> needless to say i struggled to find a lot of the moves that kasparo found oh yeah that's a very difficult game just give me a sec uh i can't help myself but show bought a little bit so in case you haven't seen it it's in here amazing yeah, this is available in chessable format as well, but this is the book. And now I'm going to find it for you just to prove what a genius piece of work it is. Why to move, by the way, in what you're looking at. And this is nasty. Like, this is seriously difficult. Because there is no apparent pin at all on the board, right? Yet. Yet. Very good. So you need to create your own opportunity here. Hmm. First thing I was looking at was maybe bishop d5. Mm -hmm. Takes, I take, then it's a pin and pressure on f7. Maybe even also bishop g6. I really like bishop g6. In fact, that proves my thesis entirely wrong because it turns out that the f7 pawn is in fact pinned. Because if I take bishop g6, I get mated on g7, right? Mm. The problem is, is that bishop g6, unfortunately, does not create a threat. It's not, it's not forcing. Yeah. <laughs> I just found the, Kam uh, the Kamsky Kasparov game in the book. Yeah, good stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was a beautiful game. And mm. he had a lot of nice, very quiet, uh, small queen yeah, moves improving that moves, were... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. I do like uh, I do like bishop d5. I don't know what the problem is with this. Not a lot, but what do you do if, if I take it? I'll take it back. And what have you accomplished? Well, I guess you can defend. Yeah, so you okay, you are having obviously matrix on f7, but I just play queen f6 and I'm going to cover it up, right? Mm. And bishop g6 doesn't work. For some reason, I, I'm really keen to make a bishop move here. <laughs> and you are completely make... on the right track. However, you are doing one thing wrong. And actually, you I have may... covered this with good old Vlad in your lesson, which I watched. Yeah, check. Uh, Aha! Check the... You are talking right. business now. He, he learned that from me, by the way. Uh, bishop uh, h7. Right. It's the only check. Well, it's if, not the only check, but that's the most logical check to look at. If king takes. Uh huh. I was looking at taking with, but I think I'm sacking too much. If I take that with the rook, he'll take with the bishop. So you are right. That's sacking too much. However, you can take something else. Yeah, because the pawn is pinned, I see it. I can take the bishop. And what's your threat? With a with a threat. On uh, uh, with a threat on um, on f7. Championa. And now you immediately see the ginormous difference between this and this, and that is that now my king has abandoned the defense of f7. So now it's attacked yeah. by two, defended by none. It's game over. Yeah. That's yeah. how it ended. Yeah, now, if you didn't try. know that this was a puzzle, this is not an easy move to come by, right? Because you are creating your so... own pin. It's not so... It's not outlandishly hard. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. The... If you use the check capture threat. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because there is a fairly strong hint there that um, black should be... Excuse me, white should be winning. That king is way too exposed and the white pieces are overall just... Uh, obnoxiously uh aggressively and uh, yeah well placed um I, I wonder why it was very easy for me to find bishop g6 and not that easy to find bishop h7 i wonder why i wish i could give you a good answer there but i don't want to pretend that <laughs> i have one <laughs> i don't know sometimes uh, yeah some ideas are yeah i don't know because bishop g6 seems to tickle the black king i guess a little bit more i don't know I, I'm guessing there too. Look, I'm going to show you another one, which I think you're going to solve in four seconds. No pressure. Oh, you don't, no, no, don't say that. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. 
No pressure. Black to move. It's already been four seconds. No, no, no. Come on. Don't worry about it. I feel, I feel so <laughs> bad now. I feel like I set you up for failure. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you one word. Sandwich. Okay, uh, I can't immediately see it, so then I will need to find candidate moves. Maybe I gave it a bad uh, hint. So I have a check capture threat. Uh, none of the checks I can find work in this position, so Correct. I can discard them. So then capture. Uh, capturing the rook doesn't seem to work either. Um, because? What's white's response? Rook takes, he can take with uh, queen or rook. Can they take with both? I'm pretty sure one of them loses on the spot. Yeah, I think if he takes with rook, you can play rook a1. You are right. However, you are also right that queen takes c2 ruins the party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was I was uh, I was uh, curious about this. Uh, I just need to check uh, checks and captures first. But I was uh, looking. Then it's threat, and th that is a bit more vague. But I, I for some reason I, I was drawn a bit to rook a one. Yeah, but rook a one unfortunately does not create a threat, right? If he takes. No, no. So it's very important, Silway, that when you create threats, you never count on what happens if what what if they do X, Y, and Z. When you create threats, what that by definition means is that if it was your turn again, you would do X, Y, and Z. So if you want to measure the value of rook a one, the real test of it is is that what would happen if it was your turn again. I understand. I understand. This is actually very, very good feedback because I never heard it worded this way before. So, so this is uh, this is really helping, actually. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> so, okay, what's so it, what, what are you threatening with? Your turn again. Okay, one. Let's 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 test the pudding by eating it. Well, I I'm just threatening in rook rook exchange. Yeah, but that's hardly a threat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I maybe my hint was clumsy, but when I told you sandwich, what I meant was crosspin, of course, right? Mm-hmm. How can we yeah, and... build on that? Yeah. Oh, uh, rook c3. And does that work? Let's see. He can't take it because he'll take the queen. So I was Correct. just looking if he had had some other. Well, I can't leave it hanging. So what happens if I take this? Well, I'll take on C1. And is that winning for you? Um, he can... He can... Um, he can run away to the second rank. Uh, can you be a bit more specific, please? King... King King H two oh yeah okay I see it uh yeah rook H one mm -hmm. it's a it's a, it's checkmate right yeah yeah rook H one yeah. King Queen H one you can pick yeah you can pick no problemo all right I'm trying to find a little bit harder one to finish the pin business oh this is a very famous one this is a very very famous one. I'm very excited to have found this. Two American greats, Evans against Bisguyer. I hope I pronounced it correct. I think I am. Um, Probably. And it's going to look like this. Have you ever seen this before? No. Oh, great. This is going to be delicious. This is going to be great news. All right, so it is um, white to move, but this has got a, a f bit more layers than the previous ones. Yeah, I like this. 
I like this discovered attack, but it's also back rank mate issues. Okay. Um Ooh, I messed with the recording again. Oh, good. Just tell me when you're ready. No, we're good. We're good. I just made the cameras okay. disappear for like 10 seconds because I'm very talented that way. Yeah, I understand. I can see there's something here, but what? Something okay, is definitely check. up here. But check. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's the right way. The check, check captures check threats cap is check always, threat, yeah. always yeah, the way A to go. So A3. what's mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> E7. <laughs> okay, uh, because I want to help you a little bit, uh, and I know which one is harder and easier, let's get King G8 out of the way first. That's the easy one. No pressure. Yeah, bishop takes h7. You With win the... the queen? Yep, very good. So after queen a3, check queen e7 appears to be more logical, and there white has got an absolutely sensational knockout blow. I want to have a dark squared bishop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't. You have <laughs> everything you need, trust me. And you will agree with me very soon. Um, okay. I will remove the arrows just to not confuse you. But those are the moves. So queen a3, queen e7 is correct. You have uh, one check. Take the queen. Yes, and you uh, can I, do I, that. I don't think this is the solution. You are also right about that. Because after the take take on e7, you can win a pawn mm. here, but that's mega. Yeah. And bishop c6 check, king d8 still defends the bishop sufficiently, so yeah, black yeah, doesn't yeah. lose anything. And actually, this is the moment when you have a pin. Yeah, I know. But I was just thinking about this because uh, you don't need to worry so much about this back rank stuff now. Exactly. But uh, but your queen is hanging. But that's exciting. See, this is what most club mm -hmm. level players mess up. That when they see that, their first thought is, "Oh no, my queen is hanging." A good no, tactician. No, I don't really. A good tactician really goes like, "Oh yes, my queen is hanging. Awesome. Can't wait to sack it. Let's do it." Yeah, I don't really care about this. Very good. The problem is, how does. Um, because we have, um, I was just, if we have a potential mate, if we could cover E8 and take the rook there, that would be a potential mate. Well, you almost spelled out the solution now. So maybe Bishop C6. If he takes the queen, it will be mate on e8, I think. Can he do something else? Take the bishop, then we win. That's also then for's mate. On, that's mate on e7? Well, I'm, yeah, else. on the back rank after king g8, yeah. Can he do something else? Um, g6? That hangs the queen with check. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You did it. Is it the solution? Oh, yeah, absolutely it is. Yeah. You have no right to doubt yourself. How could it not be the solution? Such an awesome move. That's yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like when I don't doubt myself, I have overlooked something. Yeah, but see, I, I you always have this uh, discussion, often with myself, but also with students who have similar issues. The problem with this, in my opinion, is is that if you don't trust yourself and your current skills, which you may say that your current skills are nowhere near as good as you would like them to be, but if you don't trust your skills, how do you ever make a decision? Because there's no one else that you can rely on, no one, no other you know, power to rely on other than your skills. So you must trust them because that's what you have. 
This is very true. I never thought about it like this before. I, because, I, you know, this is this is exactly my problem because I I I waste too much time triple checking everything, and then it turns out I could have just done it uh, at once. Often. Exactly. Like you had this pretty quickly, and then you I could see that you try to and. There's a big difference between doubting yourself and you trying to prove your idea wrong. One of them is very yeah. fruitful and beneficial. The other one leads nowhere. If you doubt for your, yeah. yourself for the sake of doubting yourself, that's a waste of time. You trying to prove your idea wrong is what we call in chess falsifying is the ultimate way to make it work. Because if you can't prove it wrong, then by definition, it's right. Yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know, maybe I'm doubting too much, but I always try to doubt everything. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, look. It's difficult to find line when, when to doubt, when to trust. Yeah, look, I suppose it's a lot of it is, you know, we're all different people, different personalities, and we approach chess, you know, in a different way. But um, if I were you, I would probably trust myself a bit more than what you currently do. Yeah. I think it would... You know what? I'm going to try and I'm going to see how it works. See, the thing is, and I, I'm a bit reluctant to say it, but I will say it anyway, is, is that, first of all, you will find that you find a lot of easy moves or good moves easier because you trust yourself. And on the odd occasion when you make a mistake because you were a bit too cocky, and you trusted your you know intuition or calculation too much that's also going to be a good lesson for you in other areas by which i'm not encouraging you to make mistakes but certainly to be brave enough to trust your own decision and go with what you think is right and see yeah. the thing is and this is i think the best argument to do it that magnus carlsen or ding liren does the exact same. They trust their own calculation and decision, and even they make mistakes. And they are, that's, in, in my opinion, the best inspiration to trust yourself, that no matter how good you are, you are going to make mistakes. But you're also going Sorry. to make a lot of very good ones. Now, we are going to finish it you're off. You're making a good case. I'm trying my best. Um, we are going to finish on an absolute banger. And this is going to be really, really, really hard. Okay, while you set up the position, I'm just going to add something to what you said. Uh, there are other benefits to trusting yourself too, especially over the board, because I have found in the instances I trust myself and I play a bit aggressively and I play faster. The opponent tends to believe more in me too. Oh, of and course. They react, <laughs> they react more to what I do, even though if my accuracy is lower than when I take really much time and I, I am a bit insecure, maybe my accuracy is higher. But the opponent will believe less than me because I don't seem confident. So it's a bit of psychology too. Oh, absolutely. And if you think about it, self-confidence in every walks of life, self-confidence adds to the likelihood of your success, no matter what you are doing, at least 15%. Totally doesn't matter what it is. Just fake it till you make it Exactly. Work. It's almost like fake it till you make it. Anyway, uh, very famous puzzle in front of us again. Um, I'm trying to check if the dudes who played it were famous, but that is not the case. What do you call pin in Norwegian, by the way? Binning. Binning. Okay, so it's closer to it, the... It's more like uh, in... bound. Right. I was wondering Nothing if it was bound. close to the in, uh, the German word for it, but clearly not. Yeah, it's more like it's it's bound by something. So oh, okay. Binning. I see. I see. So this puzzle has got a, a fair bit of nasties to it. So, hmm. I'm looking at uh, bishop takes f7. I'm looking at e6. I'm Why are you looking at e6? Tell me. What is it that attracts you to e6? It's aggressive. Love it. But beyond that. It's a, it's a, it's a threat. He needs to, he can't ignore it. That is also correct. For, for forcing. Yeah, it's very forcing. What I wanted to you to notice is that e6 is a move that temporarily disconnects the queen and the bishop. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at this too, yeah. And that means that there is only one retake. Like, f is not doable. I must retake with the uh, bishop. Yeah, he must take with the bishop, yeah. Right. So let's continue that train of thought. What very mm, powerful even, threat uh, do you have after even, that? Even, uh, even uh, maybe bishop h6. 
You mean now the bishop is after? not in the G. Yeah, now the bishop is not in the G file. Uh huh. So we have bishop h6, right? Mm. Okay, how can I stop the mate on g7? Yeah, you can just, you, are, you have more, many defenses. You can go uh, simply, maybe even bishop f6, you can go g6, you can... Yeah, so I've got multiple ways. Bishop f6 is definitely there, but I can easily second exchange and secure myself. Yeah, and yeah. that doesn't look like we've accomplished a lot. Right. Bishop h6, though, was very appealing because it was a mate in one fret, right? Mm. Was that the only way to create a mate in one fret? I don't think so. I think it's more. Okay, it impress me. You know, it's very hard to impress IMs. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was looking at this... Uh, Take the bishop with my bishop, but I, I can't find. No, I insist on mating one fret. Uh, that was a mating yeah. one fret. There is another one. I need to practice checkmate patterns more, but I will, I will try my best. I think the reason why I'm not seeing it is because you forgot to remove this pawn in your head. E6, bishop e6. Is this my only bishop move that attacks this? No. What's the other one? Bishop d d4. So that's a mate in one fret, right? So e6, yeah. bishop takes bishop d4. How does black... For some reason it's... Uh... Sorry? Uh, for some reason it's easier for me to find the... Uh... Find this pattern when when you yeah this your, is the more uh, this is the more yeah, typical yeah. pattern this, this is usually the one that is dealt with far simpler than that one but as luck would have it this is gonna be our solution but it's very far from obvious why okay so, let's see how we can defend it he yeah try. you tell me bishop f6 you could try he could try okay what's wrong with bishop uh, f6 he could, he, could, he could even try f6 he could try. Okay, let, let, let's work one by one, because otherwise we're just going to pile up too many problems for ourselves. Let's deal with bishop f6 yeah. first. Yeah, the problem with that is that we can just take it because the pawn on g7 is pinned. That's one of the many pins that we are going to deal with today. Good. So, bishop d4, bishop f6, no bueno, we win. Bishop takes f6. Right, next question. f6. Um, f6 is the hardest one, so I would like to leave that last if you don't mind. Okay. G6 also stops the mate. And I'm going to set this up for you because now it's getting really difficult. Yeah. Okay, you don't want it? Fine. I can go back. Yoko. Yeah, yeah. You want it uh, from here? Yeah. Okay. After G6, I want a very, very aggressive move. Still... Queen E5. Okay. What's the threat? Queen G7. Very good. How can I stop it? F6. And how do you win the game after F6? Six is annoying. No. Um. Can we set it up? You know what? I'm going to push you now because you can okay. see this. So work with me. We went e6, bishop takes e6, bishop d4, g6, queen e5, f6. Something is hanging. What is it? The bishop. On. E6. Attacked by. Queen and bishop. Bingo. Bishop takes with check. Or oh, queen, doesn't matter, both wins. I'll play that for you now because you earned it. Well done. Queen e5, 
And now the mate can only be stopped at the cost of giving up the bishop. You can take queen or bishop, it doesn't matter. Mm. And we win. Which leads us to the final hardest big question. And again, we will start from starting position, which is e6. Bishop takes e6, bishop d4, and f6. Now that move really looks like a party pooper. And yet, you have got an absolutely stunning finish there. Really difficult. Queen takes g7, I don't think works. Mm -hmm. No, definitely doesn't. I just take it. So now we have a, a white bishop on e6, we have a pawn is removed, and we have black pawn on f6. Yes, and our black bishop is on d4. Okay. What is pinned right now? The uh, bishop is on the same diagonal as the king. Correct. That was all the hints you were going to get from me because I'm a meanie. And I want you to take all the when glory. We, when we have a pin, we should apply more pressure to the piece that is pinned. You have got some good coaches. We can do this with queen g4. We can, can we do it? We can do it with queen h3. Yep. Let's stick with queen g4. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, because now we're threatening the same thing that we were looking at just now. Mm -hmm. I think. Can I take the bishop with we, the bishop? Can... Yeah, but the queen is hanging. Yes, so you just created another sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. Also known as cross pin, except this time you did one on the diagonals, which is something we haven't done. So now you applied your knowledge in a different environment. Tremendously good yeah, job. Yeah, there, there's, there's no way for him to protect that bishop again. Actually, I would like to debate that. Oh. There is. Um, king f7. <laughs> yes, exactly. King f7. <laughs> but before we go that, I will do the silly one. What's wrong with pawn f5? You'll just take the pawn. Which pawn? No, 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 no. Um... Yeah, okay. You can take that because of the rook, of course. Um... Where is the dark squared bishop? Remind me quick. Oh, uh, queen g7. Right. Now you understand why it is queen g4 and not queen h3. I understand. I understand. Yeah, because that's the mate. Last question. Yeah. How do we deal with queen of king f7? We take we... I do not want to play queen h5. Do not want to play that. No, you don't. Now we have um, bishop on e6, pawn is removed, bishop on d4, king on f7, mm -hmm. and queen on g4, right? Yep, yep, yep. And the black pawn on f6, yeah. 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 Um... What was it you said about pin pieces in the beginning? of this solving process yeah we need to add more pressure so i was just but how do we bring another attacker there to do the f pawn maybe but that would take two moves correct too slow uh rooks would take two moves why what two moves are you talking about exactly Yeah, rook d8, d1 comes with a tempo, so maybe it's not two moves but since it comes with a tempo. But isn't rook e1 attacking e6? Oh, 
Oh, the, the, yeah, I I didn't see that because we have two pieces on the e file. I, I know that that's e where I anymore. wanted to push your visualization <laughs> to realize that neither of these guys are where now they are. Yeah, so this one has been sacrificed and this guy's on d4. Yeah, therefore, yeah, yeah. the e file is a free avenue for you to execute the end of this beautiful attack. So, well yeah. done. Takes, takes, bishop d4, double x clam, queen g4, triple x clam, and either rook to e1 is going to mop up. Because black doesn't have yeah. another piece to defend this, f5 loses to check, or queen f5, in fact, just to continue the sexy with the cross pins. Yes, 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 I can see this. This is a common mistake I make in my own over the board games, this, uh, this, this thing that we discovered with the e file. That uh, so sometimes when pieces are moved in the line and, and they're not actually moved on the board, yeah. sometimes I just forget that files are opened or mm. diagonals are open. So it's a bit difficult. So it's very important to practice this. Yeah, so the, the, the method is difficult to do because whilst you are staring at the board in this position, but as you are making the moves in your head, you sort of need to you know, visualize them on the board also the same way. So as soon as you calculate E6, you no longer visualize the pawn on E5 and so on. And obviously, the deeper you go, the foggier it gets. Yeah, and um, especially when I'm so focused on the bishop on E6 and adding pressure, I get so focused on just that, and then mm. the other thing slips away. <laughs> yeah, it's a common mistake because, that because, we... Uh, yeah. Because I have uh, my brain has categorized those pieces as irrelevant for what we are doing. Yeah. Yeah, whereas the reality is that all 64 squares and pieces, all of are them relevant. are in equally relevant. I mean, you could argue that this is not relevant, but you don't know that until you solve the puzzle, right? So you have to see them where yeah. they are. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I think this is a good time, so way to call it a day. If you are yeah. happy with that. Me too. So thank uh, you. My brain really hurts. I think this was a this was a great workout and. Uh, and honestly, I've been I've been working with a lot of different coaches, and uh, I, I can just tell uh, you're you're really good. Because, oh, thank you so uh, much. Because my brain has not been hurting like this for. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, but uh, but it's so important, and also my coach Sheila, she says this all the time. It's the difference between uh, consumption and actually training. And if you want to train a chest, you have to make the brain hurt, and you have to make the brain sweat. Yeah. And, and if you're, for example, working with a coach that uh, just gives you the answer when you spend too much time, I think it's better your approach. But you're you're actually pushing me to try to find it myself. So, so I, I really I really enjoyed this. I I, I learned a lot. There. I feel glad. like I I could make some gains from this uh, from this session. So very good.